So we're going live on Voice of Crypto's LinkedIn, YouTube, and Twitter. And um, as our viewers know that we usually go live on Wednesdays, but it, this is not a normal day in the history of the cryptocurrency markets. And after the landmark judgment that uh, finally declared XRP as not a security, uh, we needed to have a legal, uh, we needed to have someone from the legal side on our channel today. And so we have Mr. Navadeh Singh Rajparohit, who's spoken at a lot many events in the past, including uh, some of the top in the Web3 space like NFT NYC. And uh, it's our pleasure to have you on board today, Navadeh. Uh, could you please give a brief introduction about yourself? Thank you, Varini. Thank you. Thank you, Voice of Crypto, for bringing me here again. So last time we discussed about SEC and Ripple case <laughs> was a few months ago. And uh, we were discussing whether this will go against SEC or this will go against Ripple. But uh, so what, what I've seen is from the judgment, it's a very balanced judgment. Some mm -hmm. parts are given to SEC and some parts of it are given to uh, Ripple. So it, hopefully it will be a good discussion and uh, we'll get to know about what exactly happened in this uh, case. Absolutely. But but from a legal perspective, Navade, while it came as a shocker to me um, in the Indian time zone, later in the night when the news broke, it was, uh, I mean, it was a crazy night to say the least. But were there any hints that this would be in the favor of, X, uh, of Ripple? And so soon, uh, by the end of... Uh, I mean, we weren't expecting the decision to happen so soon, or were we from a legal perspective? And were there any hints that uh, lawyers were able to pick from how the uh, case had proceeded that we will be hearing from the SEC anytime soon? See, I think it was expected to come sometime in June or July anyway. Uh, and there have been a lot of uh, rumors around that it might go against uh, SEC for a lot of reasons. And a lot of good reasons as well, including the speech of Inman. So, uh, the recently when the order came in, uh, saying that the Hinman speech would be considered for the judgment, uh, it gave some hope for the Ripple investors that it might be considered and based on that, it, it can go in favor of Ripple. But uh, more or less, uh, I think uh, it was expected to come in July, and uh, but not, not as, as in that the first uh, break of dawn in, in US. But yeah. let's see, as in uh, a lot of things have changed and uh, certainly the uh, market has skyrocketed for Ripple. And as in last night when I saw uh, how much increase is and what increase are people seeing is in roughly around 30% uh, raise was there for Ripple uh, in XRP token. Absolutely. And uh, not just XRP, I mean, this sudden gain also favored some of the so-called XRP killers like Stellar's XLM and uh, the entire cryptocurrency market sort of benefited from this move, which was something that uh, a lot of participants could oversee from a really long time. Uh, but now finally addressing the topic of today's discussion, which is uh, we will be decoding how Ripple sort of took this win right under the noses of everyone. And uh, if you have to decode the key points of the judgment, what would they be? And uh, you initially mentioned that it is a well-balanced judgment. While in the media it is being deemed as a big victory for crypto, for Ripple, you, on the other hand, say that it is a balanced statement that uh, sort of gives an edge to both SEC and the crypto market. So how so? And why would you exactly, exactly say that? See, I, I, I've gone through it's a fairly small judgment of 34 mm -hmm. page, which is usually not the case. So first thing which we have to understand is the case is still not over. Mm -hmm. Everybody okay. has to understand because see what I've seen, what I've seen in most of the media outlets, as in what is being presented in the market is that the SEC has already lost the matter, Ripple has already won the case and nothing, nothing is else going on and everybody is going to rely on this judgment for any yeah. SEC case which happens. But uh, unfortunately, this is only a summary judgment. So a summary judgment is only with respect to the facts which are primarily not disputed between the parties. So the facts which more or less have been accepted by Ripple and SEC, this judgment is based on that. Now, uh, what uh, Judge Enelisa Torres has done is that she has divided the sale of XRP tokens into three categories. First is the institutional sale which happened based on a contract which is usually between hedge funds within ripple and hedge fund or uh, institutional buyers or accredited investors right. 
so right. that is the first category of sale second is the sale which happened through the uh, exchanges which in which ripple did not know who is buying the xrp and the buyers also did not know who is actually selling the xrp to them right. and the third category of sale which has been uh, mentioned in the judgment is the sale which happened from ripple to either its employees or uh, vendors where they have given them xrp instead of money or the uh, or xrp is given to projects for for their fund so uh, for making or developing their projects on xrp ledger so these are the three uh, category of sale which has been mentioned in the judgment and uh, unfortunately or fortunately the institutional sale has been declared as a, a security and it has been held that the security is in the uh, institutional investment which has been done is a contract for investment and uh, security and ripple is in violation of that whereas the other two category of sale has been decided to not to be not categorized as investment of an uh, investment contract and those are not securities there is no violation in that so that's why it's a balanced judgment because uh, more or less both the parties have one certain parts of it but uh, what the industry needs to understand is that uh, what everybody was thinking that if you have entered into saps or if you have direct contract with the uh, companies it will not be categorized uh, as a security though they are mentioning that it is not a security in the agreement itself it can be categorized as a security based on how it is understood so if you have to decode it for in layman's term and uh, if our audience is want to know whether xrp itself is a security or not irrespective of the context what would we say so uh, for retail investors it's mm -hmm. it's held that it is not a security because uh, though they are investing it as uh, with the expectation of uh, gains the gains are not expected or uh, gains are not directly linked to the action of uh, the managers or the founders of the company it's not directly linked with the uh, whatever the company does it's also linked with multiple factors as the cryptocurrency if the bitcoin goes up most of the currency will go up so therefore it is tied it is not directly uh, tied up with the events or uh, projects of the project but uh, with various other variables therefore it has been categorized as not a security for retail investors so uh, for retail investors it's very easy to believe that they are mm -hmm. not investing in a security it's mm -hmm. a commodity for them or whatever uh, finally is being decided after the case is done so uh, just to give you the context of what will happen next in this matter is all the facts which are disputed between the parties will go through a trial and mm -hmm. once the trial is is finished then the final uh, judgment will come in to understand what is what understood so uh, with ripple gaining an edge against the sec there are be there, there's quite a bit of predictions that there's a similar case that tron has against the sec and that they would also gain an edge and this would by default lead to trx sort of gaining pace in the market so no predictions and uh, i would like to mention that this is not a financial advice but uh, do you see a similar fate for tron and justin sun maybe and maybe for that token as well see we have seen uh, lbrvi judgment we have seen telegram judgment both of these judgment have been relied upon in this uh, sec versus ripple and hopefully this judgment will be referred in all the other cases which are pending with respect to uh, token being security or not but it fairly depends upon the judge how the judge reads the judgment and how the judge, uh, judge goes through or what arguments are presented if the arguments are not presented before the court the court will not take a sumo moto uh, decision on whether this should be applicable or this should not be applicable the court deals with whatever is in are uh, is argued between is in before them and presented before the court uh, so there are possibilities that uh, this judgment will be relied upon to at least uh, the other two categories of uh, sale and this is what i really like about the judgment that they have uh, she has isn't categorically defined the different kinds of sale and applicability of how it is in all these three different categories which will be helpful for all the uh, all the cases where they have to define or distinguish between what kind of sale was done and whether that kind of sale is uh, defined as a security or not so uh, what sec had claimed was that xrp itself is a security mm. but 
the judgment distinguishes it based on the types of seat so if we are so, so the it's it will not be good to say that uh, xrp is a security or not but it then we have to distinguish it between different kinds of sale and then say whether xrp purchase to institutional buy as an institutional sale would be uh, a security or whether retail investor is investing in xrp or security or not so that yes. is what has to be understood yeah please go ahead. so so if you have to summarize the entire case the case proceedings from the very beginning and i know that we've already done this in one of our earlier podcasts for anyone who's watching right now and wants to know how the situation was around uh Six months back, please go ahead and check out our podcast uh, with Navid there, where we decode the case. We understand how the case has panned out. But if you have to take, if you have to look at the three key highlights of the case, starting from the very beginning until the decision that came out yesterday, what would they be, and uh, how exactly did they lead to the final decision? See, there are a lot of things which happened during uh, the whole proceeding since two thousand twenty, and. Lots of ups and downs for both SEC and uh, people, but uh, one thing which I believe uh, made a most of impact was uh, Hinman's speech. When Hinman's speech was asked to be presented before court, and there was a lot of discussion whether uh, Hinman's speech should be uh, made public or whether it should be uh, uh, produced before the court, and whether it should be as in used for discussion or uh, adjudication of a dispute between the parties. that was one turning point when it was decided that hinman speech would be as and considered then uh, there a lot of discussion on what uh, document should be considered or what document should not be considered both the company and both uh, sec and ripple file for uh, summary judgments so uh, what transpired to this event from 2020 there are a lot of events we cannot uh, categorize which event was actually uh, the most important one but if yeah. i have to i believe himman speech was uh, one of the reasons and the lbrby judgment which was relied upon is uh, relied upon to come to a conclusion and to say that uh, when the primary focus of ripple or primary argument of ripple was fair notice that the no fair notice was given to ripple and there was no existing law which So they could have relied upon to understand whether uh, XRP would be categorized as security or not. So they had uh, taken a legal opinion from uh, a law firm in US, which mm. uh, in the initial discussion had told them that if you go with the plan which you currently have, it might be categorized as a security. So they made some changes in that. And the second memorandum which came in, uh, it says that fairly, if you go, since there are no uh, case laws or there is no a uh, precedent which could support their argument there are chances that sec might not uh, agree with their uh, opinion with respect to whether xrp is uh, a security or not that was something which uh, should have has been relied upon and uh, said that for fair notice the court has rejected it outrightly that you always had a fair notice fair notice is not when there is a statute in existence you can always rely upon case laws and the precedent to understand whether your uh, whether the xrp would have, would be a security or not and therefore the the argument with respect to fair notice has been told as in has been held to be uh, a not to up to the mark for for the judgment but i am sure that there are possibilities that both the uh, parties involved would challenge this order before the appellate court to mm. to make it uh, to get more uh, out of this judgment so that for later point of time if anything happens even for retail investors this becomes a security and xrp will also claim uh, sindripal will also claim that the institutional uh, investment was also not uh, a security because they are facing lot of this and they are facing lot of uh, charges and penalties if this is finally uh, resolved appeal hmm. so so from a legal perspective where does the united states from a re- legal and regulatory perspective where does the united states of america stand um, is it an is it a step closer to sort of accepting or adopting crypto or um, i mean by default it is but um, there are still quite a few cases that are pending 
uh, especially if you look at the centralized exchanges like Coinbase and Binance, yeah. would this sort of aid, uh, would this sort of give them an edge in their respective cases? And um, sort of, would this case basically be a light bearer for um, the centralized exchanges and the regulatory issues that they have been facing in the particular nation? I, I think they certainly are going to use this case uh, to an extent that uh, whatever, see, for example, if we consider because XRP is now listed on Coinbase again. Yeah. So, and they, I'm sure Coinbase has gone through a judgment and knows the repercussion of all these three transition types of sales. So, uh, certainly they are going to use it for retail investors, but there is still a possibility of uh, them being in a uh, in a situation where they have bought securities as an institutional buyer, but uh, selling of those securities to the investors or to the retail investors, as uh, mentioned in the judgment, is not categorized as uh, a sale of securities. So, and since the charges on Coinbase is uh, with respect to that they have sold securities to the retail investors. And now that this judgment says that the secure the sale of securities uh, of XRP to uh, general public is not uh, a security as an in, uh, investment contract, therefore it could help them to a certain extent. But they'll certainly be in uh, issue with respect to what they bought, whether that was security or not. Understood. Does the structure of the US SEC itself stand a change after uh, this? Uh, landmark judgment and i don't know if you remember but a few weeks back there was this ai generated news that took over the market that gary gensler has resigned so i mean this is this is just out of my own curiosity would this sort of lead him to resign ultimately or uh, is he going to stick around and would the structure of the sec and with the with the key laws that um, the sec has started out do they stand to change after this judgment I think it's a partial win for uh, uh, Gensler and uh, I don't think he'll take it as a win for him and not as a loss because at least they have caught the uh, legs of the person the running ghost. So at least that point to, to that extent, he has won the case and they, as in, I'm not sure whether uh, I've not seen any media outlets saying that SEC has won this part of the judgment or not. But yeah. they are certainly, if, if they are not promoting it, they are certainly using it or, or deciding to go for appeal. But it will take some time for them to decide whether they have to go for appeal because either they can accept this uh, win and sh shut up, or they can take it forward for the rest of the part as well. Right. Also, um, can we just retouch upon the definition of securities by? that is being followed in the United States and does it stand a change or will there be a clearer definition about what securities are after the judgment? So uh, what Harvey test says is that there has to be an investment of money, uh, mm. whether it can be in cash or uh, or in fiat currency or in stable coins or whatever that depends upon what kind of transition you are entering into. Then there has to be a common enterprise which uh, has been held that Ripple does have a common enterprise and all the investors are basing their uh, profits or loss as a common pool in all, as, a, as an investor altogether. And thirdly, they are, whether there is an expectation from the buyer that they will raise, they will gain something out of it or maybe profit or any as an X amount out, as an out of their investment without working towards it based on the work of entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs or ma managerial work of the founders. So if these three conditions are fulfilled, then it becomes a security. What Ripple had tried uh, was to suggest a, a different test in addition to Harvey test, which says that there has to be an intention of the parties of uh, while they're investing that they will get the money back or they will raise the money. There has to be uh, certain requirements in addition to Harvey test so that to understand whether it becomes a security or not, to which the court has outrightly said that this we are not going to apply your mm. test as it is not backed by any case law though they relied upon a 1933 judgment which was relied upon in uh, sec which was relied upon in Harvey test but they said that uh, the addition of anything in addition to Harvey test is not been agreed by supreme court and adding these tests to Harvey test would go against the supreme court which is 
not allowed for a district court to go against so if that test which has been suggested by uh, by ripple it has to become a law it has to come through supreme court and not so they they might have to approach till supreme court to get the final uh, judgment on their favor to add these condition to how it has to identify whether it becomes uh, a security or not but till then the how it test is the thing which you have to send it's like a north pole which you have to follow till the time you have to decide, decide whether it's a investment contract or not but i remember a lot of people uh, going uh, coming ahead and saying that the how is test is in fact outdated and it needs either a replacement or some sort of amends and like you said that um until that does happen the current how it test is what we have as a reference or yardstick um if we talk about the changes that would be made to this particular test or will it be discarded what would they be and um how would that sort of change what securities look like in the future see i i would not go into the details of what uh, should be categorized as security or not because that is a uh, territory of uh, either the legislature or supreme court or the court to decide whether it has to be changed or not but uh, certainly to to an extent every case is different and everything is into what judgment also says that if, like uh, how it test was on orange mangroves there are cases on uh, whiskey cask or uh, condominium to be decided whether they are securities or not so it does not depend on what you are selling or what you are distributing between the uh, to the public or to the uh, investors it has to be seen through how you are structuring it so if you are structuring it in a way that it could be a security then it becomes a security in any way so yeah. whatever you do it becomes a security but it's not about the substance but the work in totality and the structure on on the how deals are made and what you have written in your agreement between the parties so if there has to be a change i i can understand that this uh, how it is is way old and should not be relied upon but it should come from a legislature or uh, or cause and or from courts but none of them are either isn't taking any steps towards it so till that time there is something which could replace it or there is any suggestion towards it we cannot say that there is this is uh, an old law which should be applying like in india also we are following law from 1860 1908 which is our primary procedural law so mm. if there is a change or there is a need for change it should come as an it should be shown by parties that why this how it is is not applicable or why why how it is is way too old to not decide upon securities but when you see at the other end where how it has been applied for whiskey cask or for condominiums or uh, for orange mangroves it okay. is vast and for security laws it has to be vast because like you cannot restrict security laws to particular angles and particular things that only when this 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 is there it has to be a security apart from that everything is not you have to go through a wider angle and then come to a narrow narrow scope to understand whether it becomes a security or not because public money is involved and if you specify the dc only dc thing will become a security it will hamper uh, innovation but it will also hamper if and if you keep it very narrow public will not be able to invest and they will not be able to generate money out of these uh, kind of investments absolutely could in agree more i was thinking yesterday that with this judgment coming uh, in this does seem like the end of an era and i mean for the last 2 to 3 years the entire market the media has been watching the ex the ripple versus sec case so carefully and i mean these were some of the highest searched terms on um, google google trends shows that clearly so um, from a regulatory perspective i think this question is on everyone's mind what next what is going to be the next ripple versus sec because we're sure that versus sec is going to stay but which <laughs> which other company is going to replace that would it be finance would it be coinbase or uh, would it be a new player altogether that sec will be sort of laying its eyes on um, any any uh, idea as to what would be the next big case from a legal regulatory perspective in the web3 crypto space i am looking forward towards uh, sec and binance because that is that has a wider scope of interpretation wider scope of allegation which has been made as compared to uh, coinbase case 
so i am i am very hopeful uh, that something see this becomes a see what uh, what i don't like as of now is that all the judgments are coming from a district court's point of view and yes. till the time somebody approaches supreme court everything is just either for that home district uh, like yes. for example this one is only with respect to uh, new york southern okay. district of new york if i am not wrong so uh, that law will only be applicable to all the companies or all the sales which has been made in that particular district and not uh, throughout us so until as somebody approaches uh, a supreme court like what coinbase had done uh, i think is still pending with respect to uh, motion to compel arbitration in i think belensky's case whether uh, the person whether it can it, whether the people can have or whoever has suffered damages because of coinbase could approach uh, courts as a class action suit or whether they have to be compelled to go for arbitration as provided in their uh, terms of use so for that they have approached uh, supreme court stating that since both the parties all the parties have agreed to limit their uh, rights to arbitration and not file class action suit that has to be uh, followed and both the parties should be referred to arbitration and not be allowed to go for a class action because class action, if a class action suit is filed then there is lot of uh, pecuniary damages which can be suffered by the company and therefore most of the companies would prefer to go for an arbitration where they can either settle and does not become a public isn't the document does not come in a public domain so therefore if until unless something goes to supreme court we are all just waiting for something to come up which will definitely take some time so if if we go with the timelines it has taken 3 years for sec is in ripple judgment to come out mm. and if it goes in appeal another 3 4 years for the appeal and then certainly isn't if it approaches supreme court then we might have a, a final standpoint on a issue whether uh, digital currency or digital assets would be categorized as investment contract or not so it since we have a runway of another 7 to 8 years to understand whether us courts would decide whether they are investment or not but i'm sure in the meantime uh, government is working on a lot of different laws there are a lot of uh, bills which has been produced before senate and courts in uh, senate which says uh, it should not be categorized as uh, investment contract or securities but uh, cftc or the commodity it should be categorized as commodity and cftc should have the jurisdiction over that Absolutely. Now, coming to the second uh, part of our topic today, how will this move impact the crypto market? And we've already seen that the impact is pretty, pretty huge, pretty massive. We saw the crypto market cap skyrocket. Some of the top coins uh, sort of gained in double digits. XRP itself gained almost seventy percent in just one day. One oh. of its massive, one of its most massive uh, upticks in the last two to three years. and uh, the next prediction is xrp to dollar 1 and then probably us dollar 3 uh, but that's in the future for now if we look at the impact that this decision has uh, already had on the markets and what do you see as a key short term effects in terms of price or in terms of uh, the regulations changing what would they be uh, see on on the issue i am not a trader so i am not uh, as in very conversion with this whole issue but to what i am expecting is that uh, till the time everybody gets to know what actually happened in this case maybe after this the market will crash and people will start uh, selling off xrp but till the time everybody is aware of what is actually happening in this case and what has been held and the case is still not over so mm. uh, people are going to buy more xrp and will see uh, see lot of sales as well because everybody wants to book their profit as well but in a long run uh, this will not impact in a larger issue because the issue is still uh, to be decided and if the appeal has to be come in but in the meantime i think i believe uh, us markets are going up because uh, see we are all expecting uh, bitcoin halving next year and till that time we'll isn't see a lot of ups and downs Hmm. but if you are only focusing on xrp it could reach 1 dollar but i don't think it is going beyond that because there are a lot of things which people have to understand when they invest in securities this is what judgment also says that most of the investors why one of the reason why uh, 
the the sale through or the sale to the retail investor is not categorized as uh, a security is because judgment itself says that the most of the investors does not know or does not understand what has been uh, portrayed to them or marketed to them as uh, as a form of investment or as a form of investment contract even if it is an investment contract they don't understand like most of the retail investor does not understand that and as long as they don't understand it there will always be market speculation most of the people will believe what is being told by most of the media which does not have a complete fact or i've seen i've seen uh, media the reports which says sec has lost the matter altogether and this is going to be uh, the game changer for the whole industry this is this is this is just a milestone in between from where we were and we are we are going to so um really interesting discussion i am almost tempted to ask what the current scenario around um, etfs is and we know that partially the the current state of the market or the bullish turn that it took was due to the application by a lot of um, significant institutional players um, around bitcoin etfs what is the current state of market in terms of approval of those bitcoin etfs and um, do you think that this after the judgment uh, these etf approvals would be a lot easier spot etf Uh, approvals, especially which the market is sort of keen on having and is expecting. Uh, what are your views on those? See, I think already two of the ETF application have been approved. BlackRock was rejected because uh, because of the issue with respect to the agreements, uh, with respect to disclosure, as in disclosure agreements. But now what they have given, as uh, in in the their second application, they have given a, a disclosure agreement. which apart from giving whatever details uh, sec has asked has also promised details over and above what has been asked which could uh, if everybody gets to know about it could be is it could be an issue with respect to giving your personal details or giving your financial details to uh, blackrock but uh, i am hopeful that most is see the adoption will not come as long as the institutional investors are not there in selling it off so if there has to be adoption institutions has to be involved and the more institutions are involved the regulation would become better or at least uh, will come to us isn't come to a point where we are accepting or we are coming to a agreement that at least these uh, things has to be understood and these things has to be applied mm. to at least go forward and then maybe we fight for more rights uh, for the industry but till that time till the time the more major institutions are going to uh, come into the industry we are not going to see regulations because there there are lobbies which would always function and until as you either you are a part of lobby or you are not a part of lobby and if you are not a part of lobby then nothing is going to get in your favor anyway mm-hmm. and Absolutely. we have there, there are a lot of lot of speculations and rumors which are happening that all these cases filed by sec was because of institutional uh, institution wanted to come into the industry and therefore they wanted to market to be swiped off but looking at the judgment the market is still there ripple mm-hmm. yeah ripple has certainly won in most of the so they were there were four allegations uh, out mm-hmm. uh, approved and granted in favor of sec uh, both the founders are uh, has have been said to be not offering sale so there were there were two things actually practically three things which uh, mm-hmm. was involved in the case with respect to whether they were in violation of securities act or not first whether the sale of uh, ex- am i audible just a sec i think we lost you for a moment there uh, we yeah. i think we can continue from where you were saying the sale of xrp the first yeah. instance so first the first issue was with respect to whether the sale of xrp from ripple was uh, securities or investment contract or not yeah. secondly whether larsen and uh, garlinghouse sale of xrp whether that was uh, sale or not is in sale of or investment contract or not thirdly mm-hmm. whether larsen uh, larsen and uh, garlinghouse 
aid it and abate it in uh, repulse violation of securities act so these were the three primary issues which uh, were dealt in the judgment and out of these three only uh, one part of the first issue has been given in favor of atc the rest of the two the rest of the three uh, was in two of the uh, issues against larsen and uh, galing house has been rejected by by court out of that this is they are not in violation of securities act and they did not aid it or abate it in uh, repels violation of uh, securities act relying on hinman's speech as well that uh, so i think larsen had uh, relied upon in his testimony that hinman had given a speech that uh, bitcoin and ether are not uh, securities then they have also relied upon two more uh, public statement by uh, government agencies that uh, xrp is not security or xrp or the industry uh, most of the coins are not uh, securities and based on that if they have listen if they have sold of xrp they are not aiding and abetting in repulse uh, violation of section 5 and because they truly believe that xrp was not a security so uh, industry is still growing and i think uh, with enforcement and so this is a cycle which uh, happens with any any new industry so either you have laws or you have enforcement if you have laws there are some who are applying those laws and following those laws there are some who are diverting from that then there is again enforcement once the enforcement is done it reaches supreme court becomes a law then law changes so it's a cycle we are somewhere in between where us is following uh, enforcement technique uh, european union is following uh, formation of laws we will see lot of enforcement in european union as well once the laws become applicable in next year and uh, being followed not being followed by lot of project and how it is being interpreted because until unless see forming of laws is just part one or step one of regulating an industry yeah. the second step becomes enforcement and third step is when the courts actually interpret what the laws are formed with respect to the industry so until unless we reach to the point where uh courts are interpreting the laws nothing is finalized everything is based on your own interpretation of law and uh, certainly the industry is is growing and hopefully after bitcoin halving we'll see more uh, gains in the industry absolutely any final words um, on today's discussion over there and i have to say this this was a really insightful discussion especially for me the way you decoded all the four pointers and um made it it made a lot of sense how uh, Uh, a lot of media houses were bashing sort of bashing the sec uh, about them losing the case when it's uh, great to see a very fresh perspective that this wasn't a win or a loss it definitely was a little bit of the win for the larger cryptocurrency market but uh, indeed a very well balanced judgment uh, that we saw from the us sec but any final thoughts on this uh, judgment or on the matter see based on judgment as an on judgment uh, and to everyone who is uh, getting involved in xrp right now or uh, trying to get gains out of xrp please go through the judgment understand what you are applying for what you are investing in because don't just rely upon three pointers five pointers given by anyone not even me <laughs> or anyone or not even hinman because that speech can be read or interpreted in different ways court can interpret whatever you say in a different ways tweets uh reddit post youtube statement so whatever statement you make during your listen this is especially for the uh, project owners that if you are making a speech if you are writing something on medium if you are posting something on twitter please understand everything is is and will be read against you in <laughs> case it becomes a issue for the for the regulators so it is very important for any project or mm-hmm. investors to understand what they are writing or what they are saying in any public forum and because whatever see it everything is based on interpretation and everything is based on perception on how it is perceived by the investors and the regulators so be very mindful of what you are saying what you are writing and therefore read the judgment before you say something because everybody is going to question you if they understand what is going on and see ultimately it's your money and if you are taking money as the project owner it's public money and you cannot waste it because regulators and the public 
once they get to know what is happening they'll definitely come with an against you what we have seen in most of the class action suit filed in us and you will certainly lose whatever money you are making plus there is always chance of you visiting jail as well absolutely and um, very well said these are the most important pieces of advice that anyone could have gotten today do your own research don't fall into the hype trap and while it's a great time for all of us to rejoice because uh, it is sort of the beginning of a bull market no comments no predictions uh, we would still say that do your own research and do not trust any analyst any institution whatsoever but be very mindful of where you place your trust and uh, of course research is key and um, thank you so much now there for those really in- so interesting much. insights uh, not just from a legal perspective but from an investment perspective as well and uh, it's always great to have you on our show hopefully we'll see you again soon thank you so much varuni hopefully i was not too pessimist about the whole issue yes <laughs> xrp community yes. has won xrp community has won we should celebrate and uh, be mindful of whatever we do next because Absolutely. the bull run is- we are all hoping for bull run but uh, anything can happen in the crypto industry and be mindful of whatever you do and where you invest your money absolutely it is in fact the wild west of finance <laughs> we cannot deny that not yet anyway despite the uh, very very bright judgments that we got recently so thanks again for joining us and thank you everyone for joining us today for this interesting session we'll also be leaving this video on our youtube channel so anyone who missed it out can catch up with what navadeh said over there and uh, do check out uh, do go ahead and follow navadeh singh rajpurohit on uh, very social media platforms big shout out to you navadeh thanks again Thank for joining you. us have a great Thank day you bye bye